Okay, hello everyone. Good afternoon. I hope you're doing well. I am Ryan McCrary, CEO and founder of McCrary Financial Solutions. So I know everyone's getting ready for the holidays. If you're about to get off work or you're about to go, uh, you know, okay. just some more hello, Christmas everyone. gifts for your children. Um, but today I just want to thank you for joining in and we have another episode of Black Entrepreneur Talk where we talk to black entrepreneurs about what they got going on in their business, everything they do and how we're trying to help the black community. So today I'm joined with a great queen, a great queen out of Georgia, I believe, not Atlanta though, but Georgia. No, no. Um, <laughs> not Atlanta though, but Georgia. All I know mostly when I go to Georgia is Atlanta, um, but we can talk about that. But how you doing today, Queen Sharika Burton? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing great. So good, before we good. get started, of course, just let people know who you are, what your business is, what you're doing, just everything you got going on. Uh, okay. Uh, my name is Sharika. People call me Rika Darnby. I used to work for the federal government. I was a contracting specialist. I did that right out of college. Um, I went from Georgia to Maryland to do that. I stayed up there for about eight years in that position. And I just realized, you know, it was very limiting. Um, mm -hmm. And I just hated the atmosphere of it. So for example, it was just very restricting. Like every day I had to go through gates where there would be uh, police officers with guns and there could be random searches. I had to turn in all my financial reports every year. So it was just, it just honestly felt like I was walking into a prison every day and I wasn't really learning anything. And just looking at the history of the organization that I was a part of, I knew that it wasn't for my people and that started to weigh on me. So I decided to leave um, and came back home down to Albany, Georgia, which is where I'm originally from. And ever since then, I've been teaching Black people about uh, financial literacy and trying to be economically prosperous, um, just doing all the different things, you know, telling about saving and investing, where there's stocks or cryptocurrency, just doing whatever you need to do to get free, really. Mm -hmm. So what, I guess, like what got you into financial literacy and just helping, you know, black people uh, learn about wealth and entrepreneurship, just like what got you into that? Um, so I would, on my way to quitting the job, I mean, I knew I needed some money to live off of. So I've always been interested in money. Uh, I just never went that extra step, like when I was working to really get the knowledge that I needed. So what really, you know, was a catalyst for that was me wanting to quit. So I, I started studying and I saved $25,000 in nine months in order to be able to, to, you know, quit my job. And that really helped me to get the knowledge that I needed. And, and I knew I wanted to share that with my people because one of the things that really sat on my spirit was um, Sandra Bland. You know, she only needed like $500 bail money to get out but nobody had it and now she's no longer with us and I just felt like that was just so ridiculous yeah, you don't right? have five hundred dollars <laughs> and now somebody in your family is dead I would never ever want to have that happen because that doesn't make any sense whatsoever so that that kind of gave me the kick in the ass I needed to be like, okay, we, we really are lagging behind in this area and we need somebody who looks like us. And when I was reading, right, like all you see is these other people who don't look like us. Exactly. <laughs> you know, exactly. you got your Robert yeah. Kiyosaki's and your, and your Dave's and your Susie's. And I'm like, y'all don't know what I got going on. So uh, I just took them with a grain of salt and I said, I'll do this myself. But that's really what it was. Mm -hmm. So I see we got some people coming in on Facebook. Uh, Devin, how you doing, Queen? Um, if you come on on Facebook, please share, please like, please throw some hearts up. Uh, if you have questions, please drop them in there. I'm talking to Sharika Burton. She is a certified financial instructor. Uh, and before we even move on, like let people know like the name of your company, your website and everything so we can have someone type it in there. Oh, sure. Um, I have Onyx Wealth Solutions. That's just, you know, for the government and all that good stuff. But I mainly operate uh, under the Abacus umbrella. We're a group of Black people who learn the stock market together. And then we also do 
investment projects. So one of our investment projects was we bought a house together in Ohio and one of our members is going to stay in it for about $175 a month, you know, and the house is owned by black people, a black person stays in it and it's going to stay in the Abakis family. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, kind of what we do. And I've written two books about finances. The first one's how to earn and keep your dead presidents. Um, and then the second one, my personal favorite is called twerk money tales from the black wallet specifically for us, <laughs> yeah, specifically for us. Like the first one is just very general, but the second one is very specific to black people and how we need to be free economically. Yeah, absolutely. And how can people get a hold of those books? Uh, the first one you can get that one on Amazon and twerk money you can get at twerkmoney.com okay so we'll type that in there twerkmoney.com twerkmoney.com <laughs> you also go by the the, the financial comedian oh uh, yeah that's just something I came up with uh, um I, it's, it's just like my own lane like I'm <laughs> I'm funny with it so but I'm talking about money still like I, I just didn't see anybody else kind of taking that approach where it's, it's joking and, and kind of putting us out there in the streets but doing it in a fun and jovial type of way and plus comedians get away with a lot of shit so I can just say yeah. whatever I want <laughs> and, and then just say like I'm joking too? huh would you have some videos and stuff too uh, on my page um and I do have a YouTube channel but most of those videos are lame Mm -hmm. okay and also please subscribe to her youtube channel if you haven't already i know i'm subscribed so i do get the updates on all your new videos and stuff like that so i can check them out um now i do want to talk about bitcoin so you see bitcoin is like a lot of people been hitting me up like especially people that came to me was like what is this bitcoin thing should i buy it and i was like i mean i bought it i'm not telling you necessarily you should definitely buy it um but i'm saying that bitcoin is going up is going crazy so you may want to invest in it so now people have been hitting me up like, oh, did I lose my money? How are they trying to scam me? It's going down. And I'm like, this is the nature of investing. You got to be diversified. You got to know, you know, when things are going to go down. That's why you don't have all your eggs in one basket. Uh, yeah. But just what's your take on the whole Bitcoin situation? Um, I'm all for Bitcoin if you know why Bitcoin is important, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the things about Bitcoin that is scary is it's so easy right yeah, I know. so it's so easy for somebody to get bitcoin and it's so easy for your money to just be gone like that because right. this is something that we've never seen before and people are trying to put limitations and put all this you know put really just put it in a box and i'm like we've never seen this before there we can't call it like you can't say that bitcoin is going to you know drop to a dollar and be worth nothing and you can't say that it's going to be a million by the end of next year like you just you really don't know what's going on exactly. um so i'm all for people really understanding the mechanics and the technology and the purpose behind bitcoin before they do anything with it so mm -hmm. that's my whole take take with bitcoin mm -hmm. yeah and i feel you yes yeah, i mean the whole blockchain technology is like really crazy so uh, have you been buying like other other coins? I know you said you, before we got live that you were buying other coins. What other coins have you been purchasing? Um, so I get Litecoin. I get Ethereum. Um, it's some other coins that I also get. Now, with that being said, um, a lot of people are just, again, getting on these coins and they don't know anything about them because, you know, it just looks so easy. Most it's, It doesn't take a lot for even a coin that has no technology behind it to go up just because it's a lot of manipulation going on right now. So I try not to tell people what other coins, like the super small coins that I do right now, just because I think it's very uh, risky if you don't know what you're doing. And I always encourage people to be diversified. So I still, I still love the stock market, to be honest with you. Like that's still my favorite thing because I think it's a little more challenging Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, Bitcoin is, is, is so easy. That's why everybody's trying to ride the wave. Like they're seeing the, the history and not understanding. They're looking at right now where we've had these massive gains, but they're not looking at Bitcoin. Like Bitcoin has been around for 
at least eight years and it mm-hmm. took that long to get to this five figure point and they're not really paying attention to that they're just kind of seeing the price point and all the percentage gains and their eyes are getting big mm-hmm. so I'm all for still making sure that you're preparing for retirement and I still think one of the best ways to do that is through <clears throat> the stock market so that's mm-hmm. just my personal take on things mm-hmm. and I, I agree so let, let's talk about that like um you know, what do you suggest for people like when it comes to retirement savings? Because well, I'm in the industry as well. So, of course, a lot goes into that, like how old you are, what is your risk tolerance, stuff like that. But what you know, tips would you have for people as far as saving for retirement? Because a lot of people I know, even people that have 401ks, they don't know anything. They don't know yeah. what they're invested in. <laughs> I'm like, where's your money at? Uh, I don't I know. Don't know. <laughs> I'm going to let Bob handle it. <laughs> exactly. like, what? Exactly. Bob doesn't care about you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, people are like, I don't even know where it's at. Like, is it Fidelity? Uh, I think the company's called so-and-so. Or this. I'm like, listen, you need to know what you're in. A lot of people that I come across, they have retirement accounts, and they, be in like, they may be in like a money market account or like some type of uh, low interest or uh, conservative account. And let's say they're like 30 or 40, usually for retirement, you don't want to be in something conservative. So like what tips would you have for people that don't know anything about retirement on how they can get on the right track? Okay. Um, So with that, I would say most of the time when you have a 401k with your employer, you really you just don't have any say like people think they have a say like I'm gonna use the government one for example the TSP right yeah. they're like oh I, I change my TSP accounts every so and so and I'm like okay but what is exactly in that L fund exactly. do you know what companies make up that L fund and they're about just like yeah I'm like, okay <laughs> and I'm saying you can't you you don't have control of it the company still owns your retirement account until you retire point blank period that's not your money so what you need to be doing is ma- at least make sure you're getting whatever they're matching because that's free money right and then whatever else you were thinking about doing extra over the match you need to invest that yourself and one of the first things that you need to do is start looking around you and seeing what it is that you use right so if you're somebody who likes jordan's do you have nike stock um if you're somebody who likes to eat cereal do you have you know the stock for general meals yeah (laughs) like do you just looking around you do you have it i'm not saying that some of those companies aren't are are the best things for you but at least you have some sort of jumping off point to even begin to see what's going on and i think a lot of what's really getting turning people off in the stock market right now especially people who are millennials around our age is they're looking at crypto, right? And crypto is doing all these 2000%, 300% and they're saying, Oh, well, I don't really see how, you know, the stock market is boring. It's boring. But here's the thing, unless you have a coin that's proof of stake. And again, that's going to go over so many people's heads because they're not studying these coins. Unless you have a proof of stake coin and you have the wallet and you know what you're doing, you, there's no way that you're going to get more of that coin. You're just going to get the value of that coin and that's it. But if you have stocks, dividends can make you, right? Like you can live off dividends. Exactly. You can live off dividends and nobody's like paying attention to that because it's not as sexy and it's been around for so long. And that's another re- thing that really kills me about people. You're like up here in the, the non-believers in crypto, which I, okay, whatever, do you, right? But you're a non-believer in crypto because it's it's too new, it's not regulated, and it's the, the it's risky. Yet you have the stock market sitting over here. It's been around for two hundred plus years. The risks are minimized, and you're already participating in it anyway without even realizing it. And you still won't do it. <laughs> what is wrong with you? That doesn't make any sense to me. You have to invest in something, and don't. Get me wrong, like I, I know we all like real estate, but it is low risk, low reward. Everybody needs somewhere to live. And unless you have an apartment building, Yo, that little thank you. Tuesday ain't going to do nothing for you. <laughs> <laughs> we have got to do better. Like we just have to. Thank you. So, yo, that seriously gets me excited because you literally say everything that I'll be telling people. Like, there's literally no, like, why? If you're not investing in the stock market, like, tell me why. 
Like, please tell me why we got some people coming in on Facebook now. Uh, guys, please type questions in if you if you have them, please. If you just joined, I'm talking to Sharika Burton. She's a certified financial instructor. So you have a chance right now to ask her questions one on one, financial questions, retirement questions, business questions, whatever the case may be. But please just let me know because I want to know if you're not investing in the stock market, why yeah. not? Like, sit like, I don't understand I don't why not. And like you said, if you're in a retirement account, that's good. But you need more than just a 401k. You need more than just a TSP or whatever it is. 503, uh, what is it? 503B or whatever it is. Yeah, well, yeah, whatever. Yeah, 503B, whatever. If you're a teacher or you're with a nonprofit, you get a 503B, I believe it is. Yeah. If you're in that, that's good. But why are you not investing in the stock market? Like you said, if you uh, have Nikes, why are you not buying Nike stock? Nike stock costs less money than the actual sneakers. You want to buy Jordans, a share of stock is less than Jordans. If you have an iPhone, why do you not have stock in Apple? If you're on Facebook all day, every day, why are you not buying shares of stock in Facebook? Like, I seriously don't get it. And we as Black people, we got to do better. We got to do better, y'all. We got people like me, Sharika, and many other people that are here to assist you, but you have to want to take action. You got to want to take action. And I, I honestly, I honestly, I don't know what, why people don't want to do it. I, 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 I really don't know. Honestly, I feel, I said this yesterday, you just want to be broke. At this point, if you know me and like in real life and you haven't come to me, you're, you just want to be broke. At, at some point, you have to say, I can do better. I don't, I don't like, I'm, I've never been one of those people where I, I like the feeling of brokenness. I would like to be able to do what I want without having to feel like, oh, this is going to break me if I have a nice time. Like that mm-hmm. has never appealed to me. And I don't understand why it appeals to anybody. If, I'm, if you're able to do it, if you're able to do better, why wouldn't you? Mm-hmm. It just doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. So we got some comments coming in. Uh, Keandra says the fear of the unknown. Okay. I mean, that, that's definitely a good point. Uh, but I would just say to you, like you said, Sharika, the stock market has been around for like at least 150 years or 200 years, whatever the case may be. So you have to look and just know your research. So if you look and say, okay, this institution, in the stock market is not new. Bitcoin, cryptocurrency is relatively new. The stock market is not new. It's been around for over hundreds of years. So if you know, based on research, that people that invest in the stock market and they've been in it for the long term, like at least 10 years, and they're in a diversified portfolio, they have never lost. They've never money. lost. So never I'm going to repeat that again. So in case y'all don't <laughs> that, if you're in the stock market and you've had uh, an account for at least 10 years, Warren Buffett says, <clears throat> if you don't want to have a stock for at least 10 years, don't think about owning it for 10 minutes. Right. So if you have a stock for at least 10 years, and that's a short amount of time, 10 years goes by like that. So if you have a stock for at least 10 years and you're in a diversified portfolio, meaning you buy multiple different shares of stock or you get a mutual fund that will automatically put you in a diversified portfolio with multiple different stocks, people have never lost money. So now that you know that information, because I just told you, what is holding you back? A lot of people say, well, how do I do it? Okay, you go to, there's a, the, the, I can name probably 100 different companies. I use TD Ameritrade. You can use E-Trade. Uh, you can use uh, Scott Trade. You can use uh, T. Rowe Price or Vanguard. I worked at Vanguard. There are many different places you can go and open an account for about 10, 15 minutes. And then that gives you the ability to purchase shares of stock. So it is very, very easy. Uh, it's very, very easy. Somebody said they don't know where to begin. Uh, you can begin literally now. They have apps. So now it's even easier to invest in a stock market because they have apps like Acorns, Stash, Betterment, Robinhood. Those are four right there. If you have an iPhone, Android, go on your smartphone right now and download either Acorns, Betterment, Stash, or Robinhood. And you have that app on your phone, just like you have the app to Facebook and Instagram and all the other stuff that don't bring you no money. Get one of the apps right now and link your bank account and then you can start purchasing shares of stock right now go ahead just talk about that queen please i mean (laughs) i mean you said like it's so easy it's almost to the point where everything is so easy it's it's made us dumber honestly i'm i'm i don't i don't mean to be rude but like at some point you have to 
say Google is free and I know how to type because I'm on Facebook. So I'm pretty sure I could figure out how to do this fairly quickly. I mean, the whole point of all of this technology and all of these apps is to make it easier for us. But we, we seem to keep want to make stuff complicated. Like, I don't know what it, I really don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. I think it's just, you know, we've become complacent and we're so used to everything being done for us that we just, I don't know, we don't want to take initiative. Like it's even just simple stuff kind of irks me. Like, ugh, I don't know. I, I, would, I would just get mm-hmm. afraid. Like, no, no, it's I, there. I, it's all there. It's all yeah. there. Absolutely. Especially like what you said about crypto. Like I've never seen investments do like 500% returns and stuff like that. So that is something that you don't want to just like see and think, oh, if my investment's not doing what uh, Bitcoin's doing, I don't want to invest. Like, right. oh, that is the wrong way to approach. That's why with everything going on with Bitcoin, like me, when it comes to like investing and just trying to make money and grow my money, Bitcoin is like last out of like probably 10 different things, honestly. So that's why like all is going down, you know, it's tanking, whatever. I'm not even looking at it. My number one uh, thing that I do on a daily basis is entrepreneurship business. So straight business revenue. How do I grow a company? How do we make more than we spend? How do we acquire customers? That's my number one. Everything else comes after that, whether it's in buying just shares of stock when I have extra money, whether it's purchasing a mutual fund, whether it's getting ETF, whether it's putting money into my Acorns account, whether it's putting in the 529 plan for my children, like whatever the case may be, I can name about probably 15 other different things that I put money in um, because I want a diversified portfolio and I see Bitcoin going crazy. But you know, like you said, just how easy it is, it can go up, it can go down just like that. So you need to be diversified in the stock market. People think it's risky, but it's actually pretty safe uh, as long as you know what the hell you're doing. Um, mm-hmm. So well, uh, what's another tip you would have for people that are just stuck like in the stock market, don't know what to do? Just what are the resources or like books or information? Uh, of course, your books, but uh, um, the information you would provide to people. Yeah, uh, my books, I don't really go too much into the um, technical aspects of investing and stuff. But if you want like legitimate rich dummy terms for the stock market, we like in the Abacus, we have the courses for the stock market. I mean, that's how I learned uh, the stock market because it all the stuff that was out there to me, they were kind of trying to use all these terms. And I think that's another thing that keeps us stagnant. They keep throwing out mm-hmm. these big words out there and we think that we can't learn them. So as long as you make stuff easy for people as from an intellectual standpoint so that they, they can absorb it better, I think that's one of the ways that we can do better about this. And I think our group does a really good job of that, of teaching our people the stock market on levels that we can understand and I, I definitely try to do that in a way that we can understand it and be funny with it because honestly let's let's be honest financial literacy is boring as hell you know, it's not it's not fun and it's not sexy no. to sit up here and tell somebody okay instead of going out tonight maybe you should stay home and cook because it's gonna save you ten dollars because you know ten dollars right now like that's not I don't, ten dollars is nothing I don't need to save ten dollars but ten dollars can eventually be a thousand and can eventually be 10,000. So you have to make it relatable. And I think our stock courses do that. And of course, I read um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I think that's a really good one to get your mindset ready, mm-hmm. you know, just for that, from that standpoint. And just, I, I really just use a lot of Google. I like, I didn't really um, stick to one person's point of view because I didn't want to have this thing where I became a overzealous follower of somebody, yeah. especially somebody who didn't look like me. Uh, mm-hmm. That's something that I really didn't want to do. Like I know a whole bunch of our people just love them some Dave Ramsey. And I'm like, right. <laughs> this man don't ain't stood your black behind. Leave him alone. He don't care about you. Then they'll go to Robert Kiyosaki. Be like, but he Asian. I'm like, but Trump is his best friend. What are you talking about? These people don't care about you. So I really, <laughs> I try not to recommend their stuff. I mean, like you, and it's a whole, again, it's a whole lot of other people. It's another guy named Eric. He teaches the stock market. Um, uh, we have somebody in the back. Of Right, boys. Uh, we have somebody in Lance. She does marijuana stock because you know that's gonna be a big thing once that finally becomes 
legal and mm-hmm. regulated, like that's going to, those stocks are going to pop off. So you really just have to kind of look around for, for the people that resonate with you. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Cause Lee, a lot of people come to me and talk about Dave Ramsey, Dave Ramsey. And I, I personally never even really like got into his stuff. I never really looked at it like that, but a lot of people just talk about him and I'm like, why are you so infatuated with him? Like, you, I'm like, I don't get you, it. Yeah. Like people be more infatuated with other people than themselves. Right. Uh, so Yandra right. says, what percentage should I invest? You know, as I know, that's definitely too much of a general question. Um, just because we need to know, like, uh, just in like, what you mean for retirement? I mean, I always say, I tell people like 10% of what you make. So yeah, if you it. can do 10% of what you make, so every two, if you get paid every two weeks, if you get paid every week, you get paid every month, if you're an entrepreneur and you get paid whenever you make some money, um, I would say 10% of whatever you get I would say invest. I honestly say at least 10%. Yeah, I, I, think more than that, I think that's definitely ideal. But let's say, you you know, you make $1,000 every two weeks or $1,000 a week or 2000 whatever. Take 10%. So 100 bucks or 200 bucks uh, every time you get paid and put that into an investment. Don't get caught up in the in what investment to put it into. Just put it into something. Put it into Acorns. Acorns is going to put you in something diversified uh, because it'll put you in a mutual fund. I think Acorns uses Vanguard. Uh, or just buy, you know, buy a stock and say, when I get paid, I'm going to buy Facebook. Then I'm going to buy Apple. I'm going to buy Netflix. I'm going to buy Nike. And then whatever else after that, Target or Walmart, wherever you shop and just do that. So I would say do at least 10% of whatever you make. And you'll be amazed at how fast that money builds up. Because it's And don't keep looking work. at it, though. Because yeah, once no, people no, put no. money in there, they'll start obsessing over it. And they'll be like, oh, what's he doing today? What's it do-? I've been there. I know. <laughs> Me too. Don't keep looking at it definitely don't do not keep looking at it but i mean after like a year two years three years five years ten years whatever you'll be amazed at how much money you've built up because of the thing i know you know compound interest compound interest that is something rarely ever talked about in the black community i talk about it a lot if you don't know what compound interest is we will let you know today but compound interest is what you want to be doing can you speak on that? Yeah, so it's like this exa- the example where if somebody said, okay, I'll give you a penny, I can give you a penny um, a day or some day or something, and by the end of 30 days, you can get whatever the compounding interest is, or I can give you 100K now and that be it. At the end of the 30 days, when you take the penny and the compounding interest on the penny, you'll have like over a million dollars. That's yeah. how serious compounding interest is. Exactly. you're adding on to what you already have and that percentage gain is it's just it's phenomenal like you wouldn't think you could get a million dollars from a penny but because of that <laughs> compounding interest it's it's mind-blowing like exactly that's i mean that's about as, as simple as you can get to explaining compounding interest without trying to be a mathematician mm-hmm. absolutely and there and there's a big difference between saving and investing because if you take 10 percent of every time you get paid and you just put it in the bank into a savings account Listen, that's good. Don't get to the bank. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's good. Don't get me wrong. That's good. But when you have, when you invest it, uh, they, that's when you really can tap into that compound interest because your money's going to grow on top of money. So let's say after five years, you did $100 every two weeks or something like that. So your principal may be, uh, 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 what is that like? 2400 I don't even know. 2400 or, or uh, 3000 whatever the case may be. Uh, that may be your principal. But because you put it into an investment, you may have $10,000 or $15,000. You don't just have what you put in. You also have the interest that accrued on top of that and then on top of that, on top of that. Uh, So Gloria says, can you repeat those apps again, please? Uh, Yes. Um, uh, They are Acorns. You can do Acorns. You can do Stash. You can do Robinhood. Or you can do Betterment. Um, okay, let me see. Raquel, so I just got to this live. So sorry if you guys already went over this. That's okay. But do you have an investment advice for people with student loans? Currently, over 20% of my income goes to student loans to savings. Uh, student loans to savings and investing feels impossible. What would you say to that, Queen? Um, so with student loans, it's very that's a very um a loaded topic for me. Like I'm all about 
getting out of debt. I think debt is slavery. And I think a lot of people who have student debt feel like they're going to die with that debt on their head, right? Mm -hmm. So my thing with student debt is I need for you, my main thing is how do I make more so I can get this down? Exactly. Right? Now, if you're not a person to me who is proficient in investing, like enough to do options or plays like that where you can actually get money pretty quickly uh you need to be trying to figure out what you're good at or or build up your sales skills or start a business or something so that that debt is eliminated like i i don't want i don't want people to try to put money into something that they aren't proficient in and then the money be gone and then you could have had you could have paid off that debt i'm always a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush, right? I, oh, I'm going to put my money toward this investment because it might pop off or I could put it on this student debt and I know this balance is going to go down. I'm all about knowing that this balance is going to go down instead of doing something where it might grow. And if you if you are trying to put it in an investment, like we said, the 10 years, you're never going to lose. But short term, you are going to lose something in investing. So I do not, I do not advise people if you don't know what the heck you're doing to start investing before you have that debt off your back. I, I, I can't in good faith do that because mm-hmm. you need to get rid of that debt as quickly as possible. Debt is slavery, period. I, mm-hmm. That's just how I feel about it. Yeah, and that's, that's definitely great advice. Um, and like you said, I would definitely consider entrepreneurship or starting a business because other than Bitcoin, Bitcoin's going crazy. I've never seen an investment do 500% in like a month or a day, whatever, right. it, whatever it does. But besides Bitcoin, entrepreneurship is probably going to give you the fastest rate of return on any type of money you invest. As long as you put your all into it, like you said, get your sales, sales skills up, get your marketing skills up, all that type of stuff. But uh, starting a business uh, that could literally, cause like, if you went hard on your business now, like in the next 10 years, you could possibly be a millionaire if you really, really went hard on entrepreneurship. Uh, but, you know, if you're content, you know, you have a good career, whatever the case may be. And you just say, I'm trying to get rid of this student loan debt. Uh, like Sharika said, I would definitely focus on uh, putting a lot of money on that debt. So if that's 20 percent of your income, you know, try to maybe minimize other bills. So you, it can be maybe 40 percent of your income or 30 percent of your income and then knock that debt out. And then you're in the black. Uh, so whatever you get, then you can save or you can invest, you can put in the business, stuff like that, and really grow your assets. Uh, but because uh, with the debt, you know that interest on the debt is going to keep piling, piling up compound interest. So with compound interest, uh, it's the eighth wonder of the world. But if you understand it, you can benefit from it. If you don't understand it, then you will pay it. Yeah. So I think that's definitely uh, great advice. Uh, for her. If anybody else has questions, uh, please drop them in. Please type them in. I'm talking to Sharika Burton. She is an amazing queen out of Albany, Georgia. Uh, She is a certified financial instructor. So if you have financial questions about how you can save more, invest more, save for retirement, uh, please, I would encourage you to ask them. Uh, Also, if you haven't shared already, please share. Share it on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. If you got a Facebook group, share it in your Facebook group. You have a Facebook business page, put it on your business page or your fan page or personal page. Let people know this information because these are the type of conversations that you need to be hearing. You need to be hearing from smart black individuals that know their shit when it comes to finance, investing, and we're trying to help. We're not like those people that are just sitting up there saying, oh, listen, you know, I already know all this investing. You got to figure it out for yourself. We're not those type of people. I don't really rock with those type of people. We're all about helping the community uh, because we practice group economics. Uh, So someone says difference between a money coach and a financial advisor. Um, so honestly, I try not to focus too much on titles. Right. Mm -hmm. But to be a money manager, anybody can do that. Like most people, when they're a financial advisor, they actually have to have certifications in order to take control of your money. Like somebody can't just like me and Ryan, we can't just uh, take control of your money. That's a regulated industry. Like you're here. Here, just give him. <laughs> I know you know what you're doing, but I'm like legally. You, I don't want the SEC or FINRA coming to my door. Right. So here, 
<laughs> yeah, we I, I don't I don't. And honestly, that's an, I don't want to do that. I don't want mm-hmm. to take control of somebody else's money because I think you should take control of your money because you're the only person that cares about your money. I honestly can't care as much as you about your own funds. Like I have to be invested in my own self as well. So this is why I say you have to learn this yourself. If you hand over your money to somebody else, their their whole thing is, okay, well, what's my fee? Mm -hmm. Okay. What am I getting out of the deal? So, and like, this is, this is another thing, right? Like if you look at the financial world and you look at hedge fund managers, those jokers get paid to lose money they get bonuses to lose lose money where is their incentive where is their incentive to grow your funds it doesn't matter they're going to get millions and millions of dollars whether you you do or don't Mm -hmm. so you have to be the controller of your money and of your life because if you don't, you're just going to be ruined. And that's what happened to a lot of people when we had the last recession. And if you can't tell, we are we are due for another one. Mm-hmm. So I really need people to get on this now while everything's all gravy. Because when the next crash happens, a lot of people are going to be in their feelings yet again. Mm-hmm. So you need to understand what's going on here. And it's not easy. And, and honestly, it's, sometimes it's boring and it's not fun, but it's crucial. Mm-hmm. And another thing, when the crash comes, don't sell your investment. Seriously. Right. That's one of the things that hurt the black community so much in 2008, because a lot of us that were invested in the stock market in 2008 and it crashed, we took that money out of the stock market, which is actually the worst time to take your money out of the stock market is when it's doing bad. So a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people <laughs> did that um, because but just, just us not knowing. It's a lack yeah. of information. So we think... Oh, my 401k, even people that weren't going to retire for 10, 15, 20, 30 years. Oh, my 401k, I lost 80% of it. I lost this. I lost that. So I'm going to take my money out. Uh, and now I'm going to put it in my bank account or somewhere safe. But that's actually from a financial literacy perspective. That was actually the worst thing you could have did. You do not want to take your money out when the stock market is crashing. Why? You see that now, though. Even, but like you see Bitcoin is crash, mm-hmm. crashing right now. And people are literally losing their minds. Like there's this picture going around this dude. He talking about some. First of all, he was silly for doing this in the first place. He took out a mortgage to buy Bitcoin. I Don't do that. that. Stop being silly. <laughs> I've seen that. You saw that. He took out a mortgage and now he's freaking out because Bitcoin is crashed. Oh my God, what do I do? Do I do I sell it? Do I get rid of it? Uh no, hold. Because what, what people have to realize is when you see your uh, balance go down, whether it's Bitcoin or the stock market, if you're a mutual fund, whatever, you didn't lose the money because you didn't sell. So when I look at my Bitcoin and say, oh, I lost 10000 No, you didn't because you didn't sell it. You didn't lose right. anything. You didn't Real, lose anything. It's the difference between realized gain and unrealized exactly, gain. Exactly. Exactly. So that's something that people have to realize. I'm glad you said that. Unrealized gain versus a realized gain uh, so when I look at my stocks or stuff like that, like I said, if I see that it went down or whatever the case may be, I'm not thinking, oh, I just lost a thousand dollars. I'm just saying my balance went down a thousand dollars. But I know if I'm invested for the long term, uh, that will come back and more. So people in 2008 that kept their money in there, now they have made that money back in quadruple times what they already had in there because they stayed in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and they still get dividends. That's that's a beautiful thing. Exactly. If you had dividends, uh, you were still getting money. Exactly. Let's talk about dividends in a second. Uh, so Angie says, "I saw that I was cracking the fuck up." <laughs> the dummy seventy five k down to forty eight k. I mean, but that's honestly that's what most people are going to do because Bitcoin is so easy. They're they're blinded. Like all they're seeing is, oh my God, Bitcoin is going up. Bitcoin is going up. I'm about to be rich. I'm about to be paid. And then it corrects and you're sitting there looking like a dummy. <laughs> Just let's talk about dividends. Cause I I mean I love dividends. Like that's another reason why you want to be in the stock market because of dividends. You can get quarterly, some pay monthly or semi, semi-annually or whatever the case may be, depending on what you're invested in, but it is free money. <laughs> Basically, I mean, that's, that's what it is in layman's term is free money. So when you buy a share of stock in a company or a mutual fund, whatever it is, uh, they will pay you a quarterly dividend. So extra money that you will get in your account 
just for being a shareholder. So if you're not investing in the stock market, do you not want extra free money uh, every quarter or every month or, you know, two, three, four times a year? Like, do you not want that? Like and you not said, everyone gives it, not every stock gives out. No, gives it doesn't. So you it have doesn't. to make sure y'all do your research on that because yeah, some people will get it and then be like, oh, I thought I was supposed to get dividends. That's true. Some of them don't have it. So you, but a again, lot of them do. Again, you have to, you have to look at that. But, but it was now, if you look at certain ones, like, oh, you would think Netflix gives one, Facebook gives one, Google gives one, they don't. So you really have to pay attention to which one because those are the like the big major stocks That's and true. don't give dividends. And with those though, you don't necessarily. I'm not gonna say you don't need it, but those companies doing so well, like you're you're gonna make money regardless because the share price is gonna keep going up. That's true, but if I'm gonna have a, if I'm gonna have a stock for more than ten years, you better have my dividends. True. That's true. I, I don't play that. Like That's in true. my retirement account, all of my stocks have dividends. I I won't. I will not put it in my retirement account if it doesn't have dividends. Can't do it. I don't care who you are. <laughs> I don't care if it's Warren Buffett's company stock. I'm not putting it in there if they ain't paying dividends. You're going to give me my money. And another thing, which you, when you get your dividends, make sure you reinvest your dividends. Do not take that money. I mean, unless you're like in a retirement, usually if you're retired, like on a fixed income and you are using that money as income or whatever the case may be, that's still your money. You can. But if you're younger, if you have 20, 30, 40 years before you're going to retire or whatever the case may be, before you need the money, I would strongly encourage you to reinvest those dividends. Yep. Uh, Edward says, looking to start a little clothing business, how to get started as a beginner, flashcards too. Um, I would say if you want to start a clothing business, I would strongly recommend you do it online and you use Shopify. Shopify is a great platform to have your own online store. I think the lowest package is maybe $30 or $40 a month, which is very, very low cost for everything they give you. When it comes to e-commerce, uh, Shopify is the best in the business. So if you're thinking of starting a clothing line, I would strongly suggest you go to Shopify, shopify.com. They, I think they even have a 14-day free trial uh, that you could go on there and you can have your own store for $30 a month. And they give you access to a lot of stuff. They give you a free virtual assistant. You can link your Facebook account so people can purchase right on Facebook uh, through your Shopify store. It'll all link. You can set up your email marketing through that. So it's a lot of things you can do. That's what I would suggest if you're thinking of clothing. And I would strongly suggest you do it online because uh, we're in this digital space. Um, another thing I want to talk about is just entrepreneurship. Uh, like, what are your thoughts on entrepreneurship? Um, and, you know, uh, how do we get more people into being entrepreneurs, being financially literate? buying stocks and stuff like that um so i'm all for that but i do understand that most people honestly aren't cut out for this life because entrepreneurship is a very tough road especially if you're one of those people where you like to have a consistent pay schedule and you don't have any initiative and you're not willing to sacrifice two years for a 10 year 10 years of being awesome right mm -hmm. Um, I think that's a lot of people's problem is they have a very short term perspective with entrepreneurship. You have to have a long term perspective and you have to keep going. I mean, it's, it's like a roller coaster ride. Oh, yeah. And another thing is, if you are going to do this and you plan on having descendants and you really want to have a business and not just be self-employed, you have to start thinking of systems. You right. can't start saying oh I, I have a business and you're sitting up here selling uh mary Kay. that's not that's not a business <laughs> your business is literally if you walk away from it somebody can come in and pick up your standard operating procedures and it will continue without you that is a business and you can pass that down to your children and they can pass it down to their children and it can continue that is a real business so don't sit up here and think that this is going to be some overnight success type story Story. I mean, that's what we're getting in this digital age. People can manipulate our thoughts and feelings through this social media platform and, you know, rent these cars and these planes and take pictures with them acting like they just made 100K in two months and they're come fresh out the gate. That's not really how it works. That's a very distorted picture of what entrepreneurship is. Again, I'm all for it, but I'm not going to sit up here and lie to you. It's not fun. It's really not. 
I mean, it has its days where you're like, oh my God, I'm awesome. But then you also have those days where like, shit, I need to go fucking find a job. I don't need time for this. <laughs> like you're going to go through those emotions. So I, I do encourage it, but you have to make sure that you have the mindset and the long-term perspective in order to do that. And another thing that I see with entrepreneurs is they sit up here and like, if they've gotten to the point where they're making so much money and they're still struggling because they don't know how to manage their money. It's a, it's, it's a different thing to be making a lot of money, but it's, but are you keeping it? Are you managing it? Will, are you making it grow? Or are you just consistently feeling like you have to keep making more and more because your expenses are always growing over what your revenues are. So that's not, that's not cool. Like you have to understand how to manage your funds. And a lot of people don't even know how to do that in their personal lives. And they think that they're going to be this domino in business and be able to do it there. But to me, if you don't, I have the issue with saying that saving and investing are different. I feel like they're the same side of the same coin because if you're not spending money then you are saving it for investing or you're saving it to to spend on a vacation like they're kind of the same to me because people don't have the discipline to set aside this money to even invest it Mm -hmm. most of them don't set aside ten dollars don't even know how to have the discipline to set aside ten dollars let alone take ten dollars and put it in acorn Mm -hmm. or put it in uh the stock market through td ameritrade so we have to to me it's basic saving is one of those basic skills that you build up with investing like investing is like the second tier of saving to me it's like you're not touching it because to spend you're touching it to do better Mm -hmm. so you have to build up that skill set and a lot of people just don't have it. You have to be able to sacrifice, make some sacrifices. And to me, investing is a sacrifice, especially if you want to win, because like you said, that 10 years, you're not going to lose. But 10 years to some people is just like saying, oh, my God, you're making me go walk out in the street naked. (laughs) I'm just telling you not to touch the money. And when it gets red, don't get scared and sell it and take it out because you're really going to lose. So you have to develop that mindset that this is not a short term solution, whether it's entrepreneurship, whether it's saving, whether it's invest saving slash investing, you have to develop that. And we just don't take the time to do it. Honestly. Mm-hmm. Is it? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So I want to remind everybody who I am speaking to, if you just jumped on is Sharika Burton. She is a certified financial instructor. Uh, and what's your website again, Queen? So if people do want to talk to you one-on-one offline, uh, they want more in-depth coaching or you people, you know, they want you to actually look at their spe- uh, situation specifically. Uh, what's your website again? Is someone please type it in there? Um, I got rid of the website. You know what? It's so funny. Most people don't go to websites anymore. They're just like, okay, I'll just message you on Facebook. So I kind of just, <laughs> I kind of just stick to Facebook now, but people can um, hit me up through messenger or email me at Rika at Rika And if you want to get my book again, that's at twerkmoney.com. So I'm usually just on the, the social media scene. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't talk to me on Twitter though. Cause Lord, I don't go on there. Oh, that's automated. <laughs> it's usually easier to get me through email or Facebook. Mm-hmm. So someone please type that in there. Uh, uh, see, so we got some more questions on there. So yeah, twerkmoney.com twerkmoney.com. If you want to get her book, also, is it's Rika at RikaDarnB.com is the email. Mm-hmm. So someone type it in R-E-K-A, Rika at Rika, R-E-K-A, D-A-R-N-B.com. Someone please, please type that in there if you want to talk to her offline because she got rid of website. Like you said, people websites are dead. I'll be telling people that oh, you need a good landing. You do need a good landing page, though. Yeah, landing pages are better because you can just make those on the fly. But... Yeah, exactly. So that's why like, I, I make funnels. So I don't even you know use websites like that. You can go to my website. That's great. But now moving forward, uh, I'm doing all funnels. So uh, I also have a new course for myself. It is uh, free, totally free. You can go to uh, financiallyliteratenow.com. Someone else, please type that in there. <clears throat> financiallyliteratenow.com. It is a free, a totally free financial literacy course. Uh, I'll go over a lot of different things. It's all brand new content. This is to get you in the right mindset going into 2018. Totally free, financiallyliteratenow. Don't forget the now.com. 
Uh, also, okay, so uh, Keandra says recession-proof business slash entrepreneurship uh, opportunities. Uh, Andre Walsh, and that is my man. He's one of my students. I rock with him. Uh, is how much money you keep. Yeah, it's definitely how much money you keep. Like you said about profit. Because a lot of people will say, oh, I made 100000 or 200000 Okay, you made 200000 but what did it cost for you to make that 200000 Oh, well, actually, when I looked at my books, it cost 250000 So actually, so you didn't make anything. Any, you didn't make <laughs> you any in the hole. Cost. Exactly. So profit, your profit margin is very, very important. And like you said, if Mary Kay or, you know, I always talk about MLMs and stuff like that. We ain't going to talk about that today. But a lot of people act like they have real businesses and they're not real businesses. Make sure you have a real business. Make sure you know your numbers. Make sure you know how much your cost of goods is. Make sure you know what is your cost to acquire a customer. Make sure you know what your profit margin is. Um, like, like me, I ran a Black Friday uh, sale and it was great. You know, had, you know, a couple thousand dollars worth of uh, revenue uh, going in for the weekend. Then when I looked at the numbers, I'm like, are we, uh, all this money came in, but just like that, a lot of money went right back out. <laughs> Cost of goods, shipping, all that type of stuff, fees. Yeah, it's up. So it was still a good profit margin, but that's just an example to show people like make sure you know your numbers. And another thing, when you're first starting out, the simpler the better. Oh mm -hmm. my God, the simpler the better. I I made that mistake and I'm still paying for it now with all these D loans. Like I'm like, oh, I need this super cool yes. computer and I need this super cool. Uh uh. You, the simpler the better mm, all that other stuff mm -hmm. okay so raquel says any advice on selling private label products real estate real estate by any she said any advice on selling uh private label products that's the one question okay. any advice on selling private label products and then also what about on real estate oh okay uh private label they have a um a lot of information out there, especially because a lot of people go through Amazon and e and honestly still through eBay, which I think is awesome because I didn't know eBay was still popping like that. But with private label, you can sell a lot of your stuff through Amazon, you know, without having to set up your own platform. If you don't want to, I'm all for setting up your own platform and controlling it. But um, you just really have to with private label, you just have to do a lot of research making sure that you have quality manufacturers and good relationships with them. Cause I know a lot of people use folks off, they find off Ali, Alibaba. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they will connect with those suppliers on there and get different quotes and then start building relationships with those um, suppliers and manufacturers over there so that they can do private label. And of course there are some in the United States, but of course you need to understand that some of those goods are going to be uh, a little bit more expensive because you know our cost of living here is a, a heck of a lot more than what it is in, in these other countries where they have lower cost of living so that's how I feel about that and as far as real estate is concerned um, what I see a lot of black people doing and I know this because this is in my family um, what they tend to do is try to get these homes um, and then get on these programs and like a lot of their rent is from these government programs and with with seeing who we have in in the um, presidency right <laughs> now, I don't think that that's cool. <laughs> so I, like I said, I have nothing against real estate. I think owning land and and owning your own home and all that stuff, I think that's great. But as far as business is concerned, I wouldn't touch it right now. Um, I think the best time to get on in on that is like actually start acquiring properties is when you have a recession. Mm -hmm. uh, that's because, you know, everybody's going to be like, oh, I can't afford to pay for my home. And then you're going to get some, some great pricing on houses. Mm -hmm. Like right now I would not start that. I, I just wouldn't because I don't think it would be profitable. Um, and then again, taking into account who we have <laughs> as president and his cabinet and how they're just cutting all kinds of government programs. I don't think that that's a, a, a good thing to do. Um, that's just my thing. My goal with real estate, me, is with the Abacus, what I want us to eventually do is to start getting into apartments and high rises, you know, these things that you see in cities, mm -hmm. doing something like that, because I think that those are the most profitable in apartment complexes. 
I think those are fine. But like doing the, the onesie twosie stuff, I'm not a fan of it right at this particular moment. I don't think you're going to get that great of a of a deal just mm-hmm. because everything is popping right now. I, I agree, too. I mean, me personally, I would say study business, entrepreneurship, start an LLC. I read an article a couple of days ago was saying under the new Trump plan or whatever the case may be, your best bet is probably to just start an LLC and capitalize on all the tax break you get for registering a business and being a separate entity. Um, so you can definitely capitalize on a lot of, uh, you know, those opportunities tax wise, business tax, stuff like that, because we have to realize the person in the white house, he ain't a president. He's a businessman. <laughs> That's Trump, the businessman, not Trump, the president. So right. people that are in businesses and stuff like that, those are the type of people that he's going to protect. Those are the type of people that America does look after. People that own the businesses, not the people that work in the companies, which is the company's good, nothing wrong with that. But when you actually own the company, uh, that's when you have a lot more leverage. Uh, that's when I think you'll see a greater return on your investment. So I would just encourage people, like, start learning business. Start learning entrepreneurship, because uh, that is something that you can have, like, the most control over. You know what I mean? Like, with the real estate market, it's so crazy you know, you don't know what's going to happen, you know. And half the time, nobody wants to deal with tenants. Like, come on, yeah, you know you don't want to deal with more people like that. Realistically, I know people that have properties and they did Section 8, so they would definitely get the money. And then they messed up the house and stuff like that. They had to put all this money into getting it fixed and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. if you want to get into it, like you said, I would say the tenants uh, or, I'm sorry, the apartment buildings, the high rise and stuff like that, where the, you know, real money is. Um, but other than that, invest in the stock market, invest in your business. Uh, that is the way to grow your capital. Um, so just a few more questions before we let her get back to her busy day. I want to definitely thank you again for just coming on, uh, sharing some important information with the people. You can tell everybody that's watching, you know, this is a very intelligent queen. She knows what the hell she's talking about. She has a lot, a lot of jewels. And this is just a small amount of uh, what's in her brain. You know, she has many, many different things she can share with you offline. It will cost a fee. Uh, we know, uh, you know what I mean? It will be a fee. I know you probably get that too. <laughs> I do. You know, people inboxing you and hitting you up. And uh, oh can, you quick, can you just call me real quick? I got a question about this, dad. I'm like, all right, well, the consulting fee is this. I'm going to send you an invoice and then we can get on the phone. Then you don't hear back from them. So uh, if anybody has any last questions, please type them in. Thank you guys for typing in the websites. Uh, if you want to talk to her offline, you can inbox her uh, or you can email her at Rika at RikaDarnB.com. Rika at RikaDarnB.com. So any last words you have, Queen? Uh, no. Like I said, I just encourage people to learn as much as they can. Like I said, uh, the recession is going to happen. I mean, that's just how economics works. It's a cycle. Mm -hmm. So in whatever you can do in order to prepare to capitalize off that while, while the going is getting is good, like getting is good right now. Um, it's, it's a great time to start stacking. So like once everything gets to that point where it's, kind of bottoming out you can just come in and swoop it up and after that you're you're set like you don't have to work anymore because my whole thing is I don't want to have to work for white people to depend on them for my livelihood like that's I'm, I'm totally against it I why would I want to depend on these people who have already proven to me that they hate me and they don't want me in their space I, and I don't want to deal with microaggressions and, and having them you know beat me down from a mental perspective and making me feel like I have no control over my own life so I really encourage people to learn as much as you can because they can't take your knowledge away from you they they, they just can't mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. james Tompkins says do yourself a favor and get with rika darn b <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> do yourself a favor and do that like seriously uh because these are the type of people you want to be around these are the type of people you want to be learning from these are the type of people you want to be partnering with and picking their brain and see what they got going on and partner with like seriously um, so, I mean, other than that, if anybody has any last questions, the last few minutes, please drop them in. Uh, please ask them now while you have free consulting time right now. <laughs> drop them in right now. Uh, but like you said, like one of the best things is just not having to depend on white people to pay your bills. Like seriously, like that. I mean, that is just priceless. Even being an entrepreneur, of course, ups and downs, you know, a lot of tough times, a lot of struggle, a lot of sacrifice. 
but not having to go and see, I worked in corporate America. So not having to go into corporate America where the company was literally like 2% black, uh, when you got to deal with dumbass supervisors and asking, you know, another man, can you take off to go on vacation? And stuff right. Like that. But no, my like, that doesn't make any sense to me. That's like the equivalent of when you're in high school and you have to ask the teacher if you can go pee. Like, oh, that irks me. I know, I know my bladder. I know I need to go to the bathroom. Why do I have to <laughs> ask you? Like, it just, <laughs> that irked me. I've never, I've never enjoyed not having my freedom that's the whole point of being an adult that's that's the whole thing when you're in high school it's like oh my god I'm tired of this life I can't wait to get out of this house and then you get out of this house and you have the adult version of your parents but except they're paying you so they think you, they can treat you like trash so I just Literally. hate it so yo I, I used to be at work like when we would have lunch we only get like an hour for lunch so you had to log out and log back in so like we would be eating lunch and people would literally be like oh I have like two minutes left let me run back to my desk I would be like, yo, I don't care. <laughs> like, what are you going to do? Like, okay, I was an extra 5, 10, 20 minutes late on my lunch. I'm a grown-ass man. If I want to eat lunch as long as I want to eat lunch, who the right. hell are as you long, to tell me? Like, as long as the work is done, what's the problem? Exactly. Like, that was always my mindset. Like, I, my numbers used to be crazy. I used to call out a lot. Like, I literally didn't care because I just couldn't. I'm not fit for slavery. So corporate uh, slavery uh, that's what it is. If you work in corporate America, some people have good jobs, good position. Look, and that's great. But most of us, especially black people working in corporate America, listen, that is the corporate plantation. And I can never get with it. I can never, you know, ask somebody, can I go to the bathroom? Or can I go to lunch? Or can I take off? That just never fit with me. So if you are in that situation and you want to get out, I would strongly suggest that you go in, try to learn how to start a business, Start investing, start learning, start reading a lot of information because entrepreneurship, another thing, it's a culture. It's not just about like being your own boss, having a business. That's great. But you got to get immersed in the culture. Angie says back, that's my life currently. Yes. I think you work at a bank or something, Angie. And I know how that is. So I'm <laughs> telling you, please, you are part of my school. So make sure you are taking the courses and learning the content because I can check. I can log in and check who's watching this content and who's not. So if you if people signing up for my classes and my school stuff like that, I'm looking to see who's watching the content. Yeah. And it's not just about like watching it too. Like you have to actually apply it at some point. Like just me from as an example, like I just started doing options. So what I did was I started like really super small. Like I would get options that were like $10 or $20. So if I did lose something, I wouldn't, you know, lose my shirt just to get just to get some experience, you know what I mean? Like get that, it's almost like an internship of options. And then once I grew and built up my confidence, I can do the big boy options now. So it's really mm -hmm. about applying it. And it's not like applying it first time out the gate. I'm about to put $5,000 in this and go hard in the paint. Like, no, you don't have to do all that. Mm -hmm. Just test it out. As long as you, you know, use the muscle, it won't atrophy, right? Like, mm -hmm. so that's what you have to do. Especially with business, the greatest time to start a business is when you're working, when you have steady income, uh, you know, when you can use that money to invest in the business, when you're not stressing about the business because you can still pay your bills because you're still at the job. Mm -hmm. The main thing is, uh, you know, your regular job is nine to five or whatever the case may be. But what are you doing after you get off? So I want to know, not you, Angie, specifically. I love you, Queen, <laughs> but everyone else, like if you're in that situation, what are you doing when you get off? Because I want to know, are you watching, you know, football for three hours? Are you watching Love and Hip Hop? Are you watching like whatever scandal, whatever the case may be, or Netflix, binge watching Netflix for eight hours? What are you doing? Because when you get off work, you have eight, 16 hours, whatever the case may be to put into building something. Like you said, whether it's, you know, actually getting into something and putting something out there, learning. So if you want to start a business, put something out there. It's probably going to flop. You're probably not going to make no money. When you first start your first business, be prepared to not make any money. Yeah. Be prepared for your fans and your family members that you thought were going to support you. Be prepared for them not to buy anything. But you got to keep going. You got to keep going. And when you get that money from your job because you're still working, invest that in the business. Invest that in trainings. Invest that in coaches, uh, people that have already been where you've been. So whatever industry you want to be in, that is the great thing about Google University. You can literally find anybody in whatever industry you want to be in. Somebody probably has already took that journey. Somebody probably has already uh, walked that path. So it's up to you to get to that person, get around that person, uh, you know, uh, learn from them, you know, put something out there, try to offer something, whatever the case may be. 
but it's up to you. It's up to you. Uh, so that's going to separate people from uh, people who say that's what they want and people to actually get what they want. So that's pretty much it for today. I'll just let you get the last word and we can just get out of here for today. Oh, no, good. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I hope somebody learned something while I was here. That's that's my whole thing. I want people to learn from me because if you're, if you're not, then we're both just wasting each other's time, honestly. Mm-hmm. And I don't like to waste time. Absolutely. Time is the most important asset we have. You can get money back, but you cannot get you time, get back. time back. Also, if you want to speak to her uh, directly, email her directly at Rika at RikaDarnB.com. That's Rika at RikaDarnB.com. And you can talk to her one on one. She can help you out. Uh, you know, it's hard to get to everybody in you know, a small session like this. But if you need like one on one coaching, some more support, some people just need that coaching support. So please email her at Rika at RikaDarnB.com, Rika at RikaDarnB.com. If you want to get my new 2018 financial literacy guide, go to FinanciallyLiteratenow.com, FinanciallyLiteratenow.com. Everyone have a great day and have a great Christmas.